Trev and welcome to my blog. Welcome to the real world. I recently went to the NEC Classic Motor Show and I thought, I know, I'll do a video of this, but I won't do a video like I normally do of it because let's face it, these videos are about as interesting as watching paint dry sometimes. So I thought, well, I was quite inspired at the show because there was various things at the show which reminded me of the past and then I thought this would be a good opportunity to cross the T's, dot the I's and draw a huge underline under previous projects. So I'm kind of moving on from the past because I've got loads of new material that I want to show you guys on my upcoming videos and it's so much easier, believe me, shooting a video, editing it and putting it straight on rather than trawling back through the past trying to remember where did I put that file? I know it's on one of these five hard drives, but I don't know where. So this has been a real good exercise in cleaning up the past and moving on. Anyway, really interesting at the show because there was a few things going on there which inspired me. So this is why I'm doing this video. A week before I'm due to be at the NEC, I'm operating my coffee van at the farm shop, which I do every single week. And my old buddy Rory rolls up. Rory, you remember Rory? Yeah, that's it, that Rory. He rocks up at the farm shop in his recently restored Nova. First time I've seen it since he's finished it. And what a cracking job that guy has made. And he gave me some brilliant news. He said that him and his partner, Daisy, have put a deposit on their first house. So congratulations, guys. I'm very, very proud of you both. I really am. And as we were chatting about things, Rob from Extreme Plasma rocks up and he says hey that's a brilliant looking car that is i'll tell you what we're in at the nec next week if you want to put it on the stand you're certainly welcome to do that that was very good of you rob thanks for that and i know rory appreciates it too so that's what we did let's zip over to the nec and meet rory uh, we're at the nec rory's bought his car here and i've been watching him do it for ages so what's your channel name rob rdc project rdc project so you can give him a follow on there if you like we're going to have a look at his car he's doing a real cool job of it This is just a glimpse of Rory's YouTube channel. I shan't steal his thunder any more than these little clips that I've put on because you can see all of his videos on the entire restoration on his own channel. I will put a link in the video description so you can go and see those videos there. contacted me earlier in the week to say that Steve, our old boss's car, the Alpha, was for sale at the show, actually on display and for sale. So we thought, wow, this is really exciting. I've never actually personally seen a car completely finished in the flesh. I did see it with the panels bolted back on after it had been fully painted and it looked absolutely magnificent. No expense spared in this car whatsoever piled a ton of money into it in parts and in labour and in materials and it was a, originally a barn find of course in Italy and Steve did all the necessary work to get it up to scratch, full roll cage, a nice fast engine as well and of course he done a beautiful paint job on it, a thoroughly deserved sale.
came to the NEC was to see Steve's car, our old boss, because his car was here for sale. And what's happened to it, Rob? It's been sold. It's been sold. So anyway, we found a stand in. Although it's not exactly the same. Hopefully that'll work. So the videos of a car being restored on this car. But they look similar anyway. It was really good to see the boys on the stand. Rob of course. And also Jason from Make It Metal. And uh, John from Double Boost. And also TM Designs was there as well. Real clever guy. His latest creation that he made for the show. Nice to see Urch's bike there as well. But what stole the show for me was the new Arc Droid plasma table that Rob's selling. He's the official UK agent. It's uh, made by Arc Droid and you can trace with it. So it's got a stylus. You can trace around stuff like your hand or an exhaust manifold or something like that. And then that programs the machine, you press go and then it just cuts it out of a sheet of steel. You can also upload files to it as well. Its cut size is a 660 mil by 380. What I really like about it is its portability. It's very compact. It's just a small base unit with a robotic arm, as you can see, and uh, not a bad price either. If you would like to see more on this machine, then I'll stick a link in the video description to Extreme Plasma so that you can go off, have a look at the machine for yourself. Very impressive. Well, I was impressed. So you could go for a eight by four table right down to a two foot square table that he makes himself in house. Extremely accurate machine. Or you could go for the Arc Droid, which is somewhere in between that. And of course the Pantograph, which is the manual machine where you can use it to draw around things and do it manually. And it just holds on to a standard plasma cutter. So really interesting to see that. Really interesting to see the guys again. So there's also, some classic cars at the show. So I had a look around some nice, interesting classic cars too. In amongst the oceans of classic cars, I saw a Citroen DS convertible. I thought, wow, that looks familiar, having worked on one for several hundred hours. <laughs> no joke at all. Oh, a massive restoration, but I'll tell you what, what a beautiful, stunning car it really is. Like nothing else I've ever seen or worked on before. And boy, that car needed a lot of work. It looked like a Bond door that had been shot with a shotgun. And looking round it, you can see that there wasn't a panel that wasn't completely rusted out. So we did a ton of work on this car. I quite enjoyed doing it, to be fair. It was a massive, massive job. And one of the things that I hadn't really considered when we started it was the fact that there was only one set of panels that's available for the car which then had to be modified. I think they were off an estate. I mean, we're going back a few years now, guys, so you got to forgive me not remembering every detail, but from what I remember, the inner wings, the rear panel, and the floors and the sills all had to be modified. So we bought these as new panels, albeit handmade new panels, and then they all had to be modified to make fit the convertible car, but we got there in the end. I never actually saw the car in the flesh finish, but I pretty much finished all the welding on it anyway. And um, it turned out really well in the end.
<laughs> fantastic memories anyway real fantastic memories of these cars whilst being slightly harrowing at the same time <laughs> I popped over to say hello to the boys at R Tech Welding and just as I went over there I was accosted by a couple of guys that I used to work with. A nice chat to both Dominic and Daz from R Tech Welding. They showed me the new range of welders. They've just bought some new welders out. So the welders that I've got, the M180 and the TIG welder, both been upgraded. Uh, the main thing being there's a lot more presets on there so the M180 you just basically program in the thickness of steel that you want to weld, the diameter of the welding wire and it works it out for you, gives you the best sort of foolproof way of welding. You can just start welding straight away, you, ha you don't have to necessarily know what amps and wire speeds programming first but you can come out of that program and just use it manually as normal as well. Supposed to be a video about car restoration, <laughs> but I've actually met a fellow coffee sh coffee shop man near the coffee larder. Here we are. And there they are. What am I making? Yeah. <laughs> a latte, a latte, please, sir. A latte, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Russ Buster were also exhibiting at the NEC, so I popped over to say hi to those guys. Chris, real, real helpful guy, he really is. Very interesting company. They manufacture many of their own products in the UK, bought and sold in the UK. If you're thinking of restoring a car, you could do far worse than go in to check them out just to see the huge, impressive range of primers, undercoats, rust inhibitors, waxes, oils, you name it. They've got it, go check them out. Real good company. Link in the video description. Massive thanks to everybody that sent me a question on my last video, which was about MIG versus TIG, which is better to be used on car body work and where to use it. I do have the answer for you guys, although I still haven't got a workshop that I can use to facilitate making the video because I want to do some hands-on demonstrations to prove my theories on certain things so that'll be a real interesting video probably be the next video that I'll make I did say in the last video that I needed to build a new outbuilding outside to house all the catering stuff because all the catering stuff is filled my workshop now have been a very busy boy so the progress has been pretty good. I'm quite pleased with it. I got even maybe a little bit more done than I expected to. I was in a desperate rush to get as much done as I possibly could because of course we're going into winter now. So the weather's breaking. Every time I have a spare moment, it's piddling down with rain. And then when I'm busy, of course, it's dry. But up until recently, I have actually managed to hit it quite well with the weather really in all fairness so yeah that's coming along really well 
I am still most definitely on course for producing some new content for the new year. I don't know exactly when you'll be seeing those new videos. I've still got this out building to finish. I have ordered some larch cladding for the outside. And that's here waiting in the workshop for me to have five minutes to crack on and do that on a dry day. And in the meantime, I've also ordered the insulation. Because my thinking is, if I've got the insulation, then I can do that on a wet day. And if it's dry, I can do the cladding outside. So that's what I'm going to do moving forward. And once it's finished, of course, I will then be able to make some fresh new content for you guys. Fresh new content in a fresh pair of underpants. Perhaps we'll rename the channel Trev in his amazing underpants. Until next time, I will say, Bye for now. Airtex oh, wow. no. That is a proper pair of pants. Would they suit me? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You could you could tuck you could <laughs> tuck your, your wallet in them and everything. <laughs> they're so big. <laughs> I think they're new. Scary, but new. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Oh, sorry. Did you manage to wire that alarm up on that old van I bought for a motorhome last week? Yeah, I did. I did. The Chinese instructions, they were a bit mad, all those colours and wires and all that sort of stuff, but it'll be fine, it'll be, it'll be fine. Yeah, send it from here. Yeah, yeah, this will work a treat. You, do you want to do it now? Oh, go on then. Yeah, go, go on, on. Well, like, no trouble, you wait no for this. Had trouble understanding the Chinese instructions then, did you?